our laws as it pertains to substances are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin. Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell you think I learned that? I'm just saying, you go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it. I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. Hey guys, coming to you from a remote location. Actually, I'm in New York City right now, and uh, we're going to try to give it a shot. I hope you hear me, and we got some calls coming in. And of course, I'm watching you guys as well on the restream. Thank you guys for all being here. Good evening, everyone. Uh, let's see if there's anything at work there. Uh, you're at work, huh? Uh, uh, rule of quarantine there. Uh, what are you guys talking about? All right, let me tell you something. They, so, so I'm technically a long hauler. I've been having symptoms well past the three-week interval of the acute illness. But Dr. Fauci and team have coined a new term. It is called post-acute sequelae of COVID-2. Post-acute sequelae, P-A-S. So they're calling this P-A-S-C now. So no more long hauler. It's all now P-A-S-C. We'll see if that sticks. I think the long hauler is, acronym has gotten pretty tight there. Uh, I am tired today. I'm better than I was. Uh, I did two days of uh, like essentially one day of a 16 hour shoot, another day of nearly a 12 hour shoot uh, for Teen Mom. We had a reunion show and I was able to do those. And then I was able to get up this morning and do Dr. Oz and I would not have been able to do so two weeks ago. So I am attributing that to fluvoxamine. I would say the fluvoxamine, what we don't know is whether it just improved my symptoms or did it actually accelerate my recovery. I don't know. I'm still taking it. I, I'm interested in getting off of it. Uh, I have not received the vaccines, Matt. I probably will. I'm, we are planning some international travel, and they're requiring vaccines for international travel, so I'm going to have to get it, whether I like, like it or not. What I've been doing is working with the company that I've described to you many times before here, Aditix, that I work for, uh, and getting Aditix scores done on a regular basis. I had one done a couple, like a week ago. And my score was, again, even higher. My antibody levels were still higher. They're 10 times uh, level of vaccine therapy, apparently. Uh, plus, I had three other, vac three other antigens that I was responding to. So if there's a change in the spike protein, I have many other ways my immune system can attack the virus. So I feel quite secure in being, in being uh, immune, uh, even to the variants, though the variants scare me a little bit. I certainly don't want any of the variants. Which reminds me, I want to tell you what I just saw about uh, Novavax vaccine, uh, which is coming out, it's coming out hopefully in May. Uh, we, I think we know that Johnson & Johnson is out now. Um, but there have been some kind of strange reactions, blood clots and things when Johnson & Johnson. I'm watching it a little bit askew as yet. So far, the Moderna and the Pfizer actually may be safer. We'll see when things get, sometimes a lot of bad things happen up front and then there's nothing bad after that. We'll see, this is all how probabilities work, right? Random events segregate non-randomly. They come in series. Sometimes that series happens early in the, in the deployment of, of a new therapy. But the Novavax vaccine, also called NVX CoV-2373, it's a recombinant nanoparticle, generates antigen derived from the, the spike protein. Uh, with an adjuvant detergent particle, okay? So that's how it gets in. 89% uh, overall efficacy for B.1.1.7. Wow, so that's the variant that's taking over. 89% overall efficacy, that's severe and moderate. I like that. And 96% against the South African strain. This is incredible. Um, and 60% against other emerging variants in this in this country. Yeah. So uh, for me, if I can wait till the Novavax is uh, out and around, that may be the one I take. Um, so I have not received any vaccines, but I am uh, watching very carefully. How long is immunity lasting? Do we know? We don't know. It might be years. People are beginning to talk about that now. There was also some data that just came out that showed that asymptomatic spread is way down if you've been vaccinated proven way down, which means soon we can get rid of the masks. Uh, once we get these variants under control and get more people vaccinated, I think we'll be in good shape. Uh, let me see if I have any updated data for that matter. I don't think I do. Um, but as of yesterday, the national data was down. Is today the 23rd or 24th? 
You know, we're down about we're up a little, a little tick, but though the hospitalizations continue to go down, hospitalizations uh, deaths ticked up. So they're they're talking about getting down towards a hundred deaths a day uh, in the United States as a sort of acceptable level for COVID when it becomes endemic rather than pandemic, which is where we're headed, right? This thing is not going to go away completely because we're never going to get everybody vaccinated. And as we know, the vaccines are not 100%. So this thing will stick around. The key is to have it so suppressed that it's not not um, replicating at such an incredible volume where there can be high probabilities of mutations. Good for you, Rain. Get that, get that vaccine. Um, Flipping birdies in the house. Act upon your belief. Due diligence. You will reap rewards of success. Yep. Uh, most of the um, contingencies or the limitations that uh, we have in our life is uh, put upon by our own brain. That is absolutely true. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I was going to tell you guys? So I'm tired, but I was able to work and work long hours, which is great. I'm still on fluvoxamine, but I'm going to taper off, I think, in the next few days now that I've gotten through this flurry of work I, I was worried about being able to do. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed with the Novavax data. I'm looking at Johnson & Johnson, hoping it improves. And um, and I don't have any data in yet today on where we are with our... Uh, na- well, maybe this may have just come in. Hold on. Yeah. No, it's the 23rd. We're the 24th, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So... Uh, let's go to some calls while we're at it. We have lots of different calls out there, lots of interesting ideas. Uh, let's talk to Michael. This is another uh, topic that has been hot recently. Go ahead, Michael. Hi, how I are can't you, hear the call. Big fan. I'm, go- I'm good, buddy. I What's happening? I appreciate the work and uh, the love you give to people that are recovering, uh, addicts and, and whatnot. I'm wondering what you think about, uh, not to make any accusations, but Tiger Woods, he's had a rough yeah. patch over the years with dependency yeah. issues and whatnot. Yeah, I here's mean, my thing on Tiger Woods. He's if, 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 all right, so here's, here's, I don't know Tiger, but here's what I see from my vantage point, which is that if you remember when he went to treatment for sex addiction, and this is in the documentary that's out there now, he went public and gave an apology with his mom sitting in the front row and all that business. But he started talking like a recovering person at that point. He was talking about his peers. He was talking about his spirituality. He was talking about r- close relationships and the sharing and the, the pain he was in. I thought, oh, my God, he's really doing this. He left that treatment prematurely and went back out onto the tour. I knew when that happened that he would be in big trouble. I thought it would happen sooner, uh, but I knew he'd be in big trouble, that doctors were continuing to give him medication that he should not be taking. These back surgeries that he needs, I'm telling you, unless he gets off opiates or gets on Suboxone, that back pain's never going away. And he just had another surgery, which means they were giving him more medicine. Uh, I don't doubt he's taking it as prescribed. He was taking it as prescribed when he was in Florida and Orange County there, asleep at the wheel. I mean, it was, you know, he just, somebody had given him all that. It's not like he's using illicit drugs. It's not like he's drinking. He's being given medication that uh, he gets in trouble with. And uh, I don't know whether there was anything involved in this recent wreck, although the sheriff, uh, who Sheriff Villanueva, who I personally know very well, is not, and no, no charges forthcoming. So whatever there is, whatever he was on, it was as prescribed, uh, whatever that means. But someone like him should not be on any opiates or benzodiazepines, Suboxone maybe, uh, but definitely not benzodiazepines, and I suspect he still gets some of that. I suspect. Don't know. Don't know. Speaking of benzodiazepines, here, Melissa's going to tell you about it. Melissa, go ahead. Um, I basically was on and off um, benzos from the time. I'm 37 now. By the t- From the time I was 17 on, um, I was born anxious with severe anxiety. Um, went through a lot of trauma in life. My brother passed away when I was young. Um, had a hard time with that, which led into, I uh, have a, had a bunch of addiction problems. Um, went to the doctor though, um, had intermedullary, inter, intramedullary spinal cord tumors, um, which caused me to get back on diazepine, or I, I mean on, um, alprazolam, um, because the doctor you thought have, that I had, was what, just so nervous. Alprazolam is, hang on, alprazolam is Xanax. So what kind of tumors did you have? Yeah. 
What kind I had of tumors? intramedullary spinal cord, t- spinal cord tumors. But because they thought that I was so – because I'm really high strung, they thought that giving mm. me that was helping me heal more, um, which no. it wasn't because I was also a part of the opiate crisis. So I had to go through that whole crisis again and All get right. on so I, I get it. What's, what is the – I get it. I get it. What, what is the uh, question? So. so my question – is, is I've been off of them for 15 months. Um, they switched me to Tulanopin now that I was on for years. Okay, um, so you're not, off, know what you're not off them. You're, you're on a long-acting one that's actually harder to get off of. So, okay. Oh, yes, it was very Klon- I got off of it. I got off of it. I've been off for 15 months of oh. the Klonopin everything. My oh, question is, is why am I not getting better? Oh, it's been hell. Um, I'm sorry I made it out alive. I'm really shocked. Um, it's rough. But it is very I'm, rough. I, Yes, the roughest thing I've ever dealt with in life. I've lost a child, I've lost my brother, and I've never had anything harder. All right. Um, so here's the deal. Listen, my, to I say need- why you're still cognitively out of it, that's the question, right? Why you still kind of don't feel fully present, yeah. right? I yeah. can't say without yeah. doing a full evaluation. We'd have to do a full evaluation. I mean, you should see a neurologist. You should get it fully worked up. Um, I don't want to scare you, okay. but some people have concerns that benzodiazepines hurt the brain after long periods of time. I doubt that's what's going on with you. My bet is, I mean, if you try to, if you're an addict and you're trying to white knuckle by yourself, that's awful. Recovery yeah. is designed to deal with the anxiety and depression that comes with being off drugs when you're an addict. It's designed to help you with that. And if you have don't have yeah. therapy, if you don't have 12 step, if you don't have something to replace the drugs. It's one of the worst experiences people can go through. You need something to help you manage that because on your own, your brain just won't do it. It's really awful. Now, why cognition particularly? Again, we'd have to look into that very, very carefully and figure out exactly. My bet is going to be it's probably just the anxiety itself Um, because people stay very anxious for a year after coming off clonopin. And plus, we know you had an anxiety disorder to begin with, right? And so that needs to be treated. You need to be in really significant uh, ongoing therapeutic uh, relationship. And I, I would recommend 12-step. It's free. Get on Zoom right now. Uh, this is uh, Brian. Hey, Brian. Yes. Hi. Hi, Dr. Drew. How are you? Good. What's up? Hey, uh, I uh, called into Loveline years and years ago. I think it was about 14 years ago. And uh, real quick, I was talking to you about being on Suboxone and buprenorphine. And I said, hey, I've been sober for like three years. And you said, well, that's not sobriety. And then the line clicked. I just want to know now that it's been after a while. I, I'm still on buprenorphine. I take four milligrams a day. I've been sober. Life is okay. great. How do you okay, feel good. about that long term? Are you, have you changed your mind I, on I, that? Do you feel good about that long I have term? Changed, I have changed my mind about the – Here's it's complicated. So, so I wouldn't call it sobriety if you're on more than, try to get down to two milligrams, okay? I, I don't, anything over two milligrams, I, I just don't call that sobriety because it still affects you, right? Uh, if you can get down to two milligram, one milligram, uh, perfect. I'm, I'm very comfortable with that. I'm even comfortable with four milligrams. But, but people um, substitute medically assisted therapy for recovery. Right. And if you're an addict, there's a lot of other stuff goes on with being an addict besides the drugs. Right. In terms of kind of Are life you? you lead, lying, obfuscating, bullshitting, all that stuff. And you, you need kind of support of the community to help help improve those processes. You need somebody who's been where you are sort of calling you out on stuff, essentially. Um, have you been able to do any of that? Yeah, I have been able to do all that. I, I still go Good. to treatment right. groups. I stay close with my sobriety right. friends. But all my friends Great. that have gotten off buprenorphine, they all relapsed, and unfortunately, they're they're all dead. So I'm afraid to get oh, off. That's it. not good. <laughs> yeah, I I yeah. don't think I you've been on it 14 years. I don't think you should get off it. I I just do you, do you feel the four milligrams? Um, very little. Uh, very, if I go a long ways out, then I start feeling it. Yes, my arthritis and stuff. Yeah, I'll start feeling it if I go long, longer than. You mean the withdrawal? Hours, so, yeah, you've, 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 that's withdrawal. Well, that's just flat out Correct. withdrawal. Um, Correct. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you taking two milligrams twice a day? Uh, Is that right? Two milligrams, milligrams twice a day in the morning. And that's uh, it. Yeah, I don't know why you would change morning. that. Yeah, I, listen, the, listen, I, <laughs> Brian. The, he, here, here's the bottom line. How could I? How could you or me advise you to improve on th- you already thriving? You're already thriving. You're already flourishing. 
That, that's, that's what I worry about. I, I, don't, I worry about you know, people just getting off drugs and being miserable or having other problems. I'm interested in people flourishing. And it sounds like you are. Oh, that's great. I feel that exact same way. That's awesome. I feel like okay. you've changed great. your opinion on that. And that means a lot. Well, it was, it was hard for me at the beginning. This is now 12 years ago. So we've been maybe even 15 years ago. I, I was seeing lots of, ex, I, I was seeing lots of diversion of Suboxone. I was seeing a lot of heavy doses. I was seeing a lot of benzodiazepine prescribing with Suboxone. I was seeing people on Suboxone doing multiple other drugs and saying they were sober and the doctors yeah. saying they're sober. Yeah. So it, it, has, it has changed. The, the way it's used, the way the community has sort of adjusted to it, the way the patients have adjusted to it. I think doctors have caught up to, uh, some of them have at least, to what addiction actually is. Uh, so I was just really, really, really concerned about it because it was, it was the excessive, um, not just enthusiasm for the Suboxone, but that it was the, the answer. And that's what really, really troubled me. But uh, for for you, it, it was, it was the. It, it, this is the way I think about it. It was the thing that made recovery possible. Great, great, right? Yep. Yeah. All right, man. That's awesome. Good luck. Absolutely. Spot on. Good for you. That's awesome. Right. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. They're glad you called. I really am. Uh, let's see. This is uh, Ty. Ty. Hi, Doctor Drew. Hi there. Okay, so <laughs> hi. Um, my question is actually about PCOS. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that I'm struggling with, and I wanted to know if you had any knowledge on it and um, what you would recommend for people who are struggling with the complications but don't necessarily want to take the route of Western medicine or pharmaceuticals. So you do not want to take hormones. Is that correct? Um... Not necessarily. Well, not not necessarily birth control. I have never really been um, given the option of any other hormones aside from progesterone. I think. Okay. Okay. And what? And you said complications. What? What are the symptoms you're having? Um, hair growth is my main is my main complication, and then infertility. Okay. Um. There are. Hmm. There are things that block the hair growth, but those are pharmaceutical products. Uh, I'm sure, uh, I'm just trying to think if dermatologists have anything that will re reduce hair growth. Uh, there probably is a lotion of the same substance that we use spironolactone sometimes for that kind of hair growth. Uh, but the other thing is, um, you know, with PCOS, the main thing is keeping your weight down. Or do you have any excess weight, body weight? Um, yeah, I do, but I'm um, okay. probably just like 10 pounds overweight. But, but that so is like a major, weight. major deal. It's a major deal. So, so let me just mm -hmm. say that, but you know, when you, part of the problem with PCOS is you don't cycle and you have excess estrogen, the estrogen is con con converted to an androgen and the estrogen is produced by your adipose tissue as well. So the overweight makes you less likely to cycle, increases the androgens and estrogens, and just makes it makes everything worse. And there's a big piece of PCOS that includes insulin resistance. So carbohydrates are a big problem as well. So yeah, seeing a dietitian is always a good di good way. I would I would go on a strict carbohydrate restriction, and I would do my darndest to to lose the weight. And then check with a dermatologist whether there's a lotion you can use to reduce some of that that hair growth. Um, but otherwise, it, it starts to become hormonal management. So sorry about that. Uh, oh, boy. Uh-huh. So looking at some of your questions here. Let me go back to the restream and see what you guys are talking about over here. Uh, 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 uh. How protected are you after the first dose of Pfizer? They're saying maybe as much as 90%. The original data was 75%. Um, and now it's... Uh, now it's they're saying more like 90%. And we may not even be taking that second vaccine in the long term. Uh, can I explain is very oh, Susan. Uh, can I explain to us again the difference between J and J and Moderna? J and J is an attenuated uh, virus, an adenovirus, a virus that causes the full a cold that's been altered to give it the capacity to produce spike antigens, which gets your immune system up against the spike proteins. And um, and that's it. That's how it works. The J and J are messenger RNAs that are go right into the cell, 
produce the proteins and send them back out again that your immune system uh, then reacts to. It's a much purer way of doing it than the adenovirus, but the adenoviruses are sort of old fashioned ways of doing it. Uh, the Novavax vaccine is even more interesting. It's sort of an assembled, uh, it's kind of a nanotechnology virus. So uh, I think that's really interesting. Well, to talk about the California variant, Andrew, because we got to keep the panic porn going. Don't you understand? Don't you understand? We're the news. We got to keep the got to keep the ratings up, and we got to keep people scared. California variant. No one is really particularly worried about. I, I don't know if you are. It, I may crow for this. Maybe it'll end up being a serious issue. Um, I do know again that that Novavax vaccine is looking good against all the variants. So I got my eye on that Novavax vaccine. Um, yeah, Misty, you can get a swollen arm after that. Uh, how long we is, is the immunity? We don't know. You, probably a good year, that's for sure. It depends whether you need a booster uh, for some of the variants or not is one of the big issues. Um, ah, Andrew Ashkazvili says, LOL, true. Yes, I agree with you. And the, Andrew, go look at the data on uh, the Nova vaccine and B.1.1.7 variant. You'll, you'll see it was something like, I can look it up again. It was, uh, I can tell you in a second. And uh, yeah, again, speed out one down. It's at 90, 89% overall, meaning mild, moderate COVID and severe. B.1.1.7, 89% and 96% against the original strain and 50 to 60% against the South African strain. Pretty good. Pretty good. I will take that. That, that would be good for me. Also, as I said earlier in the stream, uh, Dr. Fauci has, co uh, has, um, has created a new term for the uh, long hauler syndrome. It's called the Post-acute sequelae COVID-2, post-acute sequelae, P-A-S-C. Uh, okay, people, Leopold, should we take the vaccine? Uh, Fauci, Leopold says we should take it at three months. I'm doing my Aditic score every month and following it. And if my vaccine, if my antibody levels fall, I will take it. Uh, I got my eye on the Novavax vaccine now after looking at this regular, this new data. And... Um, we may have some international travel coming along, in which case they require the vaccine. You have to do it. So, um, okay. Oh, boy. Uh, these are tough questions. Okay, this is an interesting one. Let's try this. Uh, Kurt, what's going on there? Kurt? Dr. Drew, hey now. Yeah. How are you? Hey now. I'm good. How are you, buddy? Good to talk to you. My question is, my wife is getting her mm. first Pfizer shot on Friday. She's also mm. on 50 milligrams a day of edibles, THC. Mm. Will this interfere mm -hmm. with her vaccine or cause uncomfortable side effects? And she's been taking, in, 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 the, in the little note here about your question, it says she was on opiates and now she's transferred over to THC? Right, 2014, yes. yeah. and she did not go back to opiates. And th that was from Good you for her. and Mike and Bob Forrest saying, I'd rather see somebody on opiates or I'd rather see somebody on THC every day than opiates. 100%. Like, 100%. It was a One, years ago. You know the story. 100%. I, I, have, I have no problem with that if she has chronic pain, especially and it's working for that. So um, we don't know. I'm sorry we don't know. We know that alcohol for the couple of days – no, I'm sorry – couple, three days after alcohol affects efficacy, and for, I believe, two days before, Tylenol and Motrin and those kinds of medicines, non steroidal drugs, have an effect, but I've not seen any data on cannabis doing anything. So I'm afraid we don't know. My suspicion is nothing. That's my suspicion. She should be good to go. Okay, but as right? far as Tylenol, she takes Tylenol, so she should not take it like a, a day before or something or a day after? Two days. Two days before. She can take it right after, but not two, okay. two days before. Okay? Okay. The Tylenol, uh, right, it's interesting, live. isn't it? The Tylenol, we, Thank you. Tylenol is, I'm glad you called because the Tylenol is worse than the cannabis as far as we know. So, again, it's all still being studied. Uh, oh, my goodness. Oof. Oof. All right, Mike, you're going to you put me through my paces here on this one. Hi, Mike. Hey, how are you doing? I'm okay. What's happening, my friend? Um, well, I wanted to say first I enjoy listening to you and Christina P. Me and my wife both listen to y'all on Fridays. Um, Thank you. It's so fun talking to her, isn't it? Wanted to share with her. Okay. Yeah, it's it's pretty hilarious. Um, all right. So, 
My question is, um, like my story said that I uh, left for you there, my wife and I lost four children um, to miscarriages since 2015, and we our most recent was during the beginning of corona. Our longest one was 16 weeks, um, which ended up being a placental abruption. And we have no answers as to why she continues to lose. We can conceive no problem. We can't retain. We tried with our mm. last OBGYN to go through um, progesterone, pre-progesterone, you know, taking it right. prior to um, getting pregnant. And we still ended yeah. in the same result a little longer, but still ended negatively. Um, and we both kind of struggle with the mental side of that. You know, we've both decided we're no longer going to try ourselves uh, again because we can't put ourselves through that. Um, okay. And I just, I think, you know, the, hard, the hardest thing is just the mental side of it, really, for both of us. And it's just, uh, yeah, you know, I get that. So, so that, and, you know, especially. Listen, it's it's it's. I, I understand it's tough as a as a partner and as a father, but it's it's extra super mm -hmm. tough for women for many reasons, not yeah. the least of which is the biological yeah. shifts that they go through with these miscarriages, and the I you know the having something a part of you that you lose. Oh, there's so much in, involved. Yeah. And then, but I'm wondering. Like let me just throw something out there. You're also feeling less of a woman too. I didn't even, I didn't, but now she can't. I have heard that many, many, many times from women. I didn't even want to throw that one out there because it's sort of unfair even to talk about that one. But yes, I do hear that a lot. Sure. But let me just say, let me just say, have you, have you seen a fertility specialist? Um, we have not only because we know that we don't have an issue getting pregnant and our OBGYN said that it doesn't seem like it's necessary to do so. We've gone through all the genetic testing and all the Okay, but, but here's the deal. Here's my thing. I, I that that seems like bad advice to me. I mean, there's something called cerclage where they seal the cervix because sometimes the it's called uterine incompetence. Maybe he's missing the uterine incompetence and you could get a cerclage procedure. What about a surrogate? You guys have you guys have a good That's capacity to reproduce. What about surrogacy? You know, we are we're going to look at that um, hopefully this year um, because I mean it's kind of silly to me but it's important to me for a legacy and things like that. I'm an only child and I'd like my family to continue biologically. Look, um, what, whatever your reason, whatever your reason to reproduce and, and have kids, that, that these are highly personal motivations. <laughs> you shouldn't have excuse. You shouldn't have to qualify any of it or apologize for any of it. But sure. but I think I, I would you. And talk to at least, I, I I worry about your obstetrician. I don't know. I, I just it d does not seem like great advice, especially when you're suffering like this. Ask about cerclage. Mm. Okay, what about a cerclage okay. procedure? Because because it, it sounds like the placenta is your problem and uterine incompetency, and the progesterone was an attempt yeah. to support the placenta. And sometimes you can kind of lock yeah. it in there with a little surgical procedure, and things kind of go okay. But I mean, it, usually you do that when there's a second semester, second trimester rather problem. This is first trimester difficulties, yep. so it's you know it's harder to say there may be something wrong with her uterine wall, whatever. And I would strongly look at into surrogacy in in terms of how you deal with it. I mean, it depends if people are getting depressed or not. If you're actually getting depressed, um, you got to get that treated. Uh, you know, sometimes group uh, group therapy can be very helpful in terms of support. A lot of people go through this a lot. Maybe thirty percent of couples go through this of something like this. Uh, and there are therapists out there that specialize in this sort of thing. And again, the fact that your obstetrician didn't refer you to these things, I, I find rather troubling. Um, so I, I'm wondering if you're getting the best care you you can. Uh, okay, let me uh, talk to this is Mandy, I believe. Mandy. Hi, Dr. Drew. Hey there, what's happening? How are you? I'm good, what's um, up? So, I have a question, and it, it sounds kind of silly, there's a huge story behind it, but I was watching, what's his name, Stan Vaknin, have you ever heard of him? He's, mm -hmm. I, I guess, he? an expert, and um, um, he, he, he has a lot of YouTube videos. I just found this whole new mm -hmm. world of YouTube videos. And okay. he was saying something about an inverted narcissist. Okay. I'm married to a narcissist. I've been married to him for 10 years. I just started therapy <laughs> really bad. And 
um, we're not living together anymore, but, you know, I've always kind of thought, like, maybe there was a little bit of something in me, and I've never heard of inverted narcissists, and I can't find much information about it. it, it and inverted or, or inverted or introverted? Well, he said inverted is what he said, but, you know, okay. I only I think what he's so. talking about, what he's talking about is something that used to be called a closet narcissist. Which means it's okay, somebody well, okay. who, yeah, this is a term that uh, Dr. James Masterson coined. And it really, it's meant okay. for, it's codependency sometimes as a closet narcissist or as a type of closet narcissism yeah. where somebody seems I've, very I've concerned they, about, uh, say that again, Mandy. I, I, that was what I was, I was listening to things and they said, you can't be codependent and you can't, uh, and a narcissist at the same time. And then I'm, I'm watching stuff going, well, they just said you can because I was always afraid I was, you know, like, I'm going to be <laughs> quiet over here and hide and let you be the narcissist, and I'm going to take yeah. care of everybody. But then I found out you could be both, and then I'm like, no, I, I thought I was safe. <laughs> we're, we're, we're sort of splitting hairs. I mean, it's all, you know, nomenclature and things like that. But the, the bottom line is you can uh, p present as very concerned about other people, but really manipulative and getting from people what you need and not really caring about other people, just caring about how you feel. And you can hear how that could be okay. kind of, uh, kind of a, a codependency, right? Because codependents are a little bit grandiose. They need to be able to control the world. They need to make everybody else happy. And they, they experience themselves through other people. And that can have a narcissistic oh kind of God. tone to it. Um, but sometimes it can be severe. Sometimes where it's, they just use the, the salesmanship and the nicey nice stuff as a way of manipulating people and getting what they need from the environment. I think that's what he was talking about. Okay, so that has to be part of it because I have never tried to get, I, I'm, that's the one thing I know for sure. When I do something for someone, I do it for them with nothing else attached. So that has to be part of it, right? Right, and, and that's more co the self, that's co codependency. But, but remember with codependency, you know, you want to make everybody happy so your pain isn't mobilized, so you feel okay. Without, and without that's the doubt. kind of narcissist. Yep, without a doubt. Yeah, and that's the kind of narcissistic. Yep. That's the. I think that may sometimes that's just plain old. It really, that's just plain old boundary problems sometimes, and not narcissism per se. So yeah, you 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 okay. get it. You got it. All right, you get what's going on. Okay. And uh, there's some well, good books out there. There's a good book on narcissism. Let me recommend if you if people involved with narcissists, a good book called Why Is It Always About You. Read that book. Okay. Why is it always about you? It, okay. it talks about how to survive relationships with narcissists. So it it's, uh, might help well, you. I think it's well, still in print. Thank you. You bet. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right, thanks. I'm having bye -bye. trouble with my... You bet, Mandy. There we go. Uh, let me go back to the restream and see what you guys are up to. Um, somebody in here said that uh, this is for our previous caller with the, the uh, mic, I think his name was. Um, which was that somebody had four miscarriages and went and saw a fertility specialist and now has two great kids. So there you go. It happens all the time. Uh, we, we were the product of a um, fertility campaign, and that's how we ended up with triplets, which they don't do so much anymore. Uh, let's see. No trolls on Twitch today. Good, Tom Cigar. Well done. You've been busy batting them away. Uh, <laughs> okay. So let's go back to the calls here. Uh, let's see what we got. Here's just somebody I have no idea what she wants to talk about. So we'll, we'll play, uh, you know, Russian roulette here today. Amanda. Hello. Amanda. Hey, hey. Hi there. Uh, yes, it's me. Sorry, I'm just getting my daughter set up. Um, oh, good. This is Rambling Rose, by the way. Hi, Rambling Rose. Um, um, I am trying to convey to a family member that they've probably been on the wrong medicine for a very long time. And yeah. that's why I haven't been living my life for 15 years. So that's why all of this is including now. And it's kind of an anxious feeling. Wait, but wait, wait, wait. Slow, me, slow down, Ramblin' Rose. You're, you're rambling a bit here, my Ramblin' okay. Rose. Uh, I, no, I didn't I'm quite catch it. I'm trying to take care of my daughter. <laughs> I didn't quite catch it. So slow down and yeah. tell me again. It's just a lot. It's a lot. Um, it's just been wise for a very long time. So that's the scary part about changing things. Hi. And Annie wants to say hi. So now she's on the phone. Hi, hi Annie. Hey, hey. Hi. Can't see right, her though, unfortunately. I need to okay. talk. Can you find something to watch, honey? There you go. I know, sweetie pie. 
But I can't, I need to talk on the phone right now. You want one? I'm you sorry. Wait for <laughs> I'm so sorry. What? This is bad timing. It's all good. I, I know how, how difficult that can be. There you go, honey bunny. There you go, honey bunny. All right, so there's, so what's the medicine? There's your free choice, pick whatever. In, pick whatever. In between the toys, what's the medicine and what's the condition being treated and who is he to you? Three things. What's the medicine, what's the condition, um, and what's he to you? Okay, um, bipolar medicine. And I think that it was probably misdiagnosed 15 years ago as... Um, anxiety, or it was misdiagnosed as bipolar, but I think it was anxiety at the time, and I think they have been on the wrong medicine this whole time. And, and, and what medicine is he on? Been getting along. Is your husband? I don't know the specific medicine, but no, this is my mom. Oh, it's your mom. Uh, yeah, I would have to know what what medicine. I mean, you can be bipolar and have anxiety, also, right? So we don't know what the original presentation was back then. Bipolar is not no, a subtle know, condition. Like, you know what I mean? The, the only thing no, that gets missed as bipolar exactly or gets misdiagnosed as bipolar is typically substance abuse. Now, if she is drinking or something else and they didn't know that, then okay, then I can easily see it being misdiagnosed. Um, but uh, anxiety does not usually get mistaken for bipolar. No, I just feel like if she's been on the wrong medicine this whole time, then it could be affecting her now. Uh, she was yeah, the wrong, the wrong listen, something. yeah, well, first of all, no diagnosis, no treatment. So if the diagnosis is wrong, the medicine is only going to do harm, right? Number one. And number two, mm -hmm. if she was, even if she was properly diagnosed over long periods of time, medication could have deleterious effect, need to be changed. Uh, maybe she has a second diagnosis, a second problem. Maybe it's time to come off these medications for a while. I, I, I agree with you. I completely agree with you. Um, uh, so I'm, I, but how you talked to her about it was the question. Just use lots of questioning, like how long you been on that medicine for? What medicine is it? And call me back and tell me what the medicine is. Just lots of questions. Do you think it's helping you? Who's the doctor prescribing it? Don't don't get into you or saying you know a lot of not you statements or I've you, know, you might say I've noticed. You could say I've noticed some changes, some personality changes, and see if she's and, and said you know then say Man, I've been worried. Maybe that medicine isn't working for you anymore. Don't say something like. Something's wrong with you. It must be that medication. Boom. You'll never get anywhere with that. You'll never get anywhere with that. Uh, let's see. Oh, boy. Uh, so many crazy questions here. I want to talk to another long hauler here. All right, Rebecca. One long hauler to another. What's Hi. going on? Hey. Hi. Um, Hi. Well, a few, I guess last week I started getting sort of dizzy. And um, I went to the doctor, and they took a big plug of wax out of my ear, which I thought was mm. maybe causing it. Mm -hmm. It does do I that. I still was a little bit dizzy. Yeah, and I was, um, yeah, and I was driving a couple days ago, and I have a clutch car, and I, I, I put my foot on the brake, and I stalled my car, and it freaked me out because I couldn't make my foot stop pushing the brake. Like yeah. my left leg, which always goes on the clutch, and it's, I said, I'm not driving now at all. Yeah. I just stopped yeah. driving, and. Mm. And I'm just, it's the, it's the weirdest thing. I still don't have taste. I had a really mild taste of COVID. I just lost my taste and smell, but mm. I never got fatigued. I never had a fever. I never had any of the bad stuff. And um, but now I have this to pay for it. It's like the after, I call it the after COVID party. And, yeah, um, well, they're calling I, it now, so post, I have to keep post-COVID post sequelae, they're calling it now. So, so um, <laughs> yeah, it could be COVID. I mean, I can't guarantee you that's what it is, but these are, I could definitely, with my COVID stuff, my post long hauler or whatever we're calling it, um, definitely would be like that. That that is just the characteristic of the kinds of things I'm doing now, where I mess things up. I know. Yeah, it's and I know that. I don't know how much information there is even, and you can even tell me like, you have an idea of how long this is going to go on for. And I'm, I'm wondering if I, I'm peaking right now because um, <laughs> I when I was sitting down, I'm, I'm, it's, it's I'm, like you're, dro I'm like you're dropping hallucinogens. Yeah. I think I'm peaking now. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I just like, it, it's worse when I'm sitting down trying to move my legs 
to do stuff. Well, well here's a, here, here's a, this is this is how I would approach it. Uh, the wax in the ear can cause dizziness. Uh, it sounds weird, but if it gets up against the eardrum, it can yeah. cause dizziness. No, so that no. it could be. Yeah, and no, once no, it gets no. going, it kind of keep going. So it's possible that's kind of what you're yeah. dealing with. But it's also possible that you have long COVID because it gets in the brain. It affects the brain. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I would for sure get a medical evaluation to make sure it's that and not something new happening. And we don't want to have something else going on that we miss. And then talk to your doctor about fluvoxamine. Uh, fluvoxamine has really helped me with my long hauler symptoms. Those kinds of symptoms particularly really, really, really helped a lot. I'm only taking 50 milligrams twice a day. And I had ringing in my ears and decreased hearing and all kinds of stuff like that. It's the kind of stuff you're getting. Uh, eighth nerve problems. It's the nerve goes to your ear. And um, fluvoxamine seemed to make a difference. I'm still taking it and I'm still swearing by it. So we'll see. Uh, there, are many, there are several big studies underway. There's only one study been done so far that has uh, been published. Uh, but, you know, the anecdotes are pretty strong. We're going to take a little break and then I'll be back and take more of your calls and uh, see what you guys are up to on Restream. This pandemic began, we were not sure how it spread. Everyone began wearing masks and using hand sanitizers. Great ways to slow the spread. But a lot of people still get sick. I can personally attest to that. We now know that COVID-19 spreads via aerosols and droplets from the nose and mouth. And I've been thinking about this for a while. Why aren't we also sanitizing the nose and mouth, killing the virus directly at the place where it spreads? Why weren't more doctors thinking about this? Well, some doctors have done the research. Wish I discovered it sooner. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Halidine. It's an FDA-registered antiseptic for the nose and mouth that's proven to eliminate 99.99% .99 of the virus that causes COVID-19 in just 15 seconds. That's right. It's created by a team of clinicians with decades of experience in antiviral treatments, initially created to protect healthcare workers. These are smart scientists, and it's a great product that also eliminates many other viruses and infecting particles. I'm using both their nasal antiseptic swab and their oral spray to help protect those around me, and you should be too for others and for yourself. Whether you're hopping on a three-hour flight, always use it there, visiting grandparents or attending a meeting that you can't miss, Halodyne's family of oral and nasal antiseptics give you the safe, easy, on-the-go antiviral protection for up to four hours. I encourage you to try Halodyne at halodyne.com today. My listeners get 10% off with the discount code Dr. Drew. That is H-A-L-O-D-I-N-E.com, discount code D-R-D-R-E-W. So obvious, it just makes sense. Stop the virus before it spreads and gets in your body with halodyne. Well, I too have struggled with GI issues over the years. I have something called Lynch syndrome. So gut health is extremely important to me. And while gut health awareness has increased, it's led to a wellness trend that's inspired a host of questionable marketing and some false claims. Now you've seen the word probiotic attached to all kinds of supplements, drinks, even more. They may claim to deliver the healthy microorganisms our gut needs for proper function, but all too often the promises are in fact too good to be true. Thankfully, I became aware of a company called Seed and their flagship product, the Daily Symbiotic. Seed's Daily Symbiotic offers 24 clinically researched strains of microorganisms in a single dose. These strains support gut health and can improve regularity and relieve bloating, sometimes within as little as 24 to 48 hours. To me, what really sets Seed's Daily Symbiotic apart is the delivery system. While some products may offer the right strains, they're fragile, they rarely survive the trip through the gut, doesn't get where it needs to go, but Seed uses a capsule in capsule design that helps ensure the probiotic reaches your colon, which is where they often are needed. I have been taking Seed's Daily Symbiotic, and I really encourage you to check out their story and the science behind what they do. To try it for yourself, just go to seed.com slash Dr. Drew. Use code Dr. Drew 20 for 15% off your first month of daily symbiotic. That is S E E D.com slash Dr. Drew. Use code Dr. Drew 20. All right, we're back. And uh, don't forget my friends also at the I Wand. Uh, I'm. We were going to go on a cruise in the in the uh, spring, and they just canceled it. But I was going to use the Iwan to get me safely through all that. So uh, we used it on the plane like crazy last you know, on Saturday when we came out here. Uh, so that Iwan is, I swear by it. That and the Halidine. I, I used the Halidine before I got on the plane, uh, and before I go into new environments, I'm always using that. So it's a way to make masks work better. That's all I'm saying. Uh, this is a really interesting and important call. It's going to take a minute. So Carrie, thank you for calling. Hi, Dr. Drew. Yeah, so um, I have a brother that mm -hmm. our family takes care of. He's 34 years old and he's paranoid schizophrenic. Um, we bought him a house a few years ago and he's been off. He lives in the home 
but he's been off his meds and he's starting to um, threaten people and send horrible emails and at Christmas we had to call the police and he's been 10 13 many times but now we're talking to lawyers trying to find a lawyer to help us get a conservatorship and my mom's biggest concern is what happens when we do get that piece of paper in what sense in terms well, of she I guess like what when we get that piece of paper we do have control of like what we can do with him but at that yeah. point I guess He's so deficient, like he's eating raw flour and hiding under plastic at night. So like, right. but he won't right. go to the doctor. He won't go to right. the hospital because there's nothing right. wrong with him. And so, so, so here's, here's what you do. Okay, so, so in okay. his current state, his schizophrenia will drive him to the street and he will die. Or he will get involved in a fight and somebody will kill him or something. Uh, he is going to die of schizophrenia if he doesn't get it treated. That's the way this works. And you must not be in California. Where are you? We're in Georgia. Yeah. In California, they would never give you conservatorship. Never, never, never. Hey, man, who are you to say? Who are you to say? This is, he's living his best life. Dead. It's an insane position not to help people that need custodial care to get that care. So what you would do, Carrie, is you would, you would take him to the hospital and get him stabilized. And they would probably put him on a long acting, like an injectable kind of an antipsychotic agent that he would get every month or maybe every few weeks, depending on what they decide to use. Um, and, and that's what you do. And once he's properly treated, he will eat again and he will thrive again. He will do, you know, it's, it's in his current condition. And it sounds like the condition is deteriorated enough that a sane person would call that gravely disabled. He's going to die of malnutrition. He's yeah. going to die. It's just, just a ridiculous situation. Uh, and with some, some proper care, he can be just fine. Uh, so I would get the conservatorship, and then I'd put him in the hospital for stabilization. And then once you get that oh, team what? together, whatever that psychiatric team is, have them follow him as an outpatient to make sure that there's a there's ongoing care that you can supervise. Right? So then you don't have to worry. Can, Go ahead. We really want him to be someplace for a long period of time because yeah. he has. we've done the injectables before, mm. and... He just refuses to participate. I mean, yeah. it's, it's very difficult. And it's gotten to the point to where he, like, threatens to hurt people. And we've called the cops, and they, you know, yeah. it's just a big old mess. But I, I know. So uh, Thank God you're in Georgia and not California. Thank God you're in Georgia because this would be – you wouldn't imagine what would happen to California. But, but literally the cops wouldn't even come out. They would just go, what, what do you want us to do? Um, so uh, I would um, – Getting people placed is somewhat a, a tougher, tougher putt, right? Because you have to find the place, okay. and there aren't there aren't many good places around. I don't know what it's like in Georgia or where you are, but it's hard to find good places. That's the first problem. The second problem, it's it's a little tougher. You know, when you get the conservatorship, ask the judge about it. You know, can we place him if we need to? Uh, I, it depends on the particular laws and things. I usually what I focus on is getting somebody stabilized. If you get them stabilized and keep them stable, keep a team around them, have the a power to – he doesn't have to participate if you have conservatorship. You can just keep, well, go back to the hospital then if you don't want to go, and you can take him back. Uh, if, you know, and so, so when, it, with you time – take him back to the hospital, you mean like the police will take him back? Typically, yeah, that's go. what it is. That's right. That's okay, typically what it is. Yeah. And somebody will put him on a hold. Please put him on a hold. Somebody put him on a hold. He, he is gravely disabled, gravely great. And his life is in danger. And so you, you get it. You get it. Get, get the conservatorship. That, that I, it's, 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 you guys are actually more enlightened than most in terms of your willingness to take over his care. Most people don't, they aren't willing to do it. They just won't do it. It's too hard to work. They, they're afraid of it. They don't understand it. You seem to understand it. You've got a good plan. Go, go forward. Really. You, you'll save his life. Okay. Well, thank you. You know, if there's families, everybody talk to police officers and attorneys, and everybody always says when bad things happen, where are the families? Well, we're one of those families who really wants him to not hurt people, and we're just not going to give up. C Carrie, the, of all the homeless people in Los Angeles, probably 30,000 of them have family like you, helpless, unable to do anything. Think about that. Imagine that. At least, maybe 50,000. 
There, there's just an army of people out there who have loved ones in the street that they're unable to help because of shitty, disgusting, draconian, unenlightened, foolish laws, foolish, that result in, in demise of people that can be very easily helped. Thanks, Carrie. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate right. it. I will call you and let you know how it goes. Please. Thank you. I'd be very interested to know. Thank God Georgia's uh, sane compared to California. Ooh. Okay, you guys, I'm, I'm, I'm um, on borrowed time now in terms of how I'm feeling. I'm pretty tired. Um, so let me look at, um, oh, Anthony Brown's in the house. So Tony, uh, Anthony, you could uh, help. If she were in California, I would have gotten her to you. Uh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, let's see, what's going on to happen when after dark, when Tom and Christina move? I'm going to probably go down to Austin on a regular basis and do something down there. We'll just do a bunch of them in, you know, over a few days. Um, let's see what else you guys are talking about. Mm, seizure disorder. Uh, there's no best vaccine, cat. There just is the vaccine and get the one that she can get. Um, and after dark, Tom Cigar, I don't see after dark going anywhere right now. Both Christina and I like doing it. So I will make, we will go make, take the effort, do, do what's necessary to keep it going. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Jerry. Apparently Jay Moore, Susan, you'll enjoy this said on Corolla show that I should run for governor. Thanks, Jay. Uh, just what I need, uh, a governorship. Um, is the, t oh, you like the background, Anthony? It's, uh, it's downtown Los Angeles. I'm in New York and I have downtown Los Angeles behind me. Johnson and Johnson, 66%. Uh, I think that was against, uh, moderate COVID, uh, whoever that was on Twitch. I think in terms of severe COVID, it's more like 85% if I'm, if I'm not right. Fact check me on that if you guys don't mind. Uh, Susan, what are you laughing at? She, oh, I know. Uh, okay, three and a half weeks after starting fluvoxamine, I'm doing great. Ooh, loop duplicate. Uh, still all symptoms gone. It feels like a miracle. Are you still improving? That's big news. Uh, yes, I am. I'm not only still improving. I so so loop. I had loop duplicate. I had almost the same thing as you. I've been on about three weeks. Immediate improvement. I tried to taper down after two weeks. I got worse again, so I went back up. Um, and I've been able to function. Uh, I, I can't tell if the fluvoxamine is making me able to function or it's just reduced my symptoms while my body is healed. I don't care which it is. I'm, I was able to function and I feel good. Uh, and um, yeah, good for you. I, so it's, I, I, was, I, was, I was worried that, um, that I was just as an N of one, as one uh, anecdote, that uh, I may have been over-reporting my benefit, but to have a second person report something very similar, very exciting. That is very, very exciting. So what we're talking about is we both have long hauler symptoms that are neurological, fatigue, ringing in the ear, dizziness, fogginess, that stuff. And fluvoxamine has been shown to be effective for that. And lo and behold, uh, now you have N of two reporting that it's been very useful for them. Uh, uh, okay, Eric, I'll get to you in a second. Oh boy, I have lots of questions. I want to, I'm, I'm trying to get to all your stuff here. I'm not going to get to a lot of these questions. I'm sorry to say, uh, okay. Oh, this is good. This is our Kristen, I suspect. Yes. Wis Chris, Wisconsin Chris, here we go. What's up? <laughs> Hello, Drew and Susan. How are you? It's so nice we to speak with you. We are good. You as well. I'm glad What's to happening? hear it. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah, how are your kids? So, the reason I'm calling, they're nuts. They're exactly what kids are supposed to be. If they were too yeah. well behaved, I'd be concerned. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So, my question has to do with the lack of um, this responsibility when it comes to the mental health, especially when it comes to special education kids who have been out of schools for going on a year now. 
it seems to be constant finger pointing. Districts are pointing to the state, saying yep. that they had lack of direction. State is yep. pointing to the feds, saying that there yep. was no direction from the feds. And so what we're left with is these children who should be protected by a myriad of federal laws, who mm. you know have services outlined within these laws, mm-hmm. and they've just been denied assistance and services for over a year. And now things are even worse. And um, I would recommend to anybody out there who has a kid with special needs and you feel like you're not being assisted, ask for an IEP reevaluation. The district has 30 days. Yeah. But my question is, why aren't we hearing more from, you know, medical pediatric fields and medical psychological pediatric fields about how important it is to look out for the mental wellness of our youth. Chris, Kristen, the, the easy, the simple, the let me say, special ed kids. I, look, the simple answer is we're, we feel helpless. This, the government has run amok. It has grotesquely overextended itself and its, and its power. And I've been complaining about it for nine months. Uh, the, School district in Los Angeles still isn't opening up, and it's the unions that are. So you have the unions, the the school board, the or the county, the state, the the federal government, and each bureaucracy is saying something different. So of course the teachers are freaked out and scared. They don't know who to believe. They don't they don't know where to turn either. So these differing bureaucracies that are out of control. I think the courts need to solve it. I I you should sue the. There should be lawsuits that make sure this doesn't happen again. That, that's, I think, the only way it's going to be is if, in, if the, the, the courts are going to be the, the limb of government that sort this out. And uh, I, I don't know that anything can be done for what's happening right now, except we can rescue the future, perhaps, from this happening again to kids. We don't even know the that. full impact. Kristen, I want you to do me a favor. I did a podcast. I don't think it's up yet. One of the Dr. Drew podcasts coming soon is with Dr. Lisa Stroman. Listen to that podcast. You you will get the you will get a sense of what's going on. I don't want to freak you out, but it will freak you out. Um, I I had my son listen to it because uh, he was interested in this stuff, and he just, I go, "What do you think?" He goes, "This is ridiculous. This is just ridiculous." And I said, "Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous what's happening. It's just damn ridiculous." It's so uh, listen, I'll see you on it's locals. Sad. Okay, These it's sad or ridiculous. Kids. Yeah. You're yeah. killing me. I will. You're killing me. You I, 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 I've, I've seen will. it coming. I've seen it coming, and we don't even know how bad it's going to be. But I've seen it coming, and, and it's uh, it, and it's not oh, going to be good. It's going to be the great misadventure of this entire pandemic. Will be what we did really to eight to fifteen year olds. That, that's where I see the real problems coming. So um, again, we'll see you on locals, my dear. Uh, let me go back to the restream quickly. Um, GSR, I'm not 100% just yet. I'm pretty tired, though, so I'm going to wrap up at um, uh, I'm going to wrap up at top of the hour. Uh, and yeah, I don't blame the teachers for being freaked out. I really don't. They don't know who to believe. You've done the panic. You've panicked everybody. Congratulations! And then the teachers are subject to four or five different bureaucracies that are telling them different things. Of course they're freaked out. I don't blame them. Vaccinate them and let them come back. But you won't vaccinate them because that's not equitable. That's not in your little plan that you had in the state of California. Are kids important or not? If they're important, vaccinate the teachers. It's very simple. Very simple. You can have more than one priority. It's possible. It's possible for humans to have a few priorities. God, that makes me crazy. All right, Tom Cigar, I will say hello to the Big Apple for you. Uh, you guys, I am, yes, I'm passionate, passionate, but I'm also tired, tired. So I'm going to have to say goodbye soon. There was one more call I wanted to get to. Let me see if I can find her. Uh, hmm, I wanted to see what this was. Uh, Erica, go ahead. Hi, Dr. Drew. Thank you for taking my Erica, call. Um, you bet. Hi. Pardon me? Go right ahead. Yep. Okay, sorry, I couldn't hear it tell if you could hear me. Okay, so my question is, um, four years ago, uh, I took myself off of five medications. I'd been diagnosed as uh, bipolar, Oof. borderline, and then finally, um, uh, finally schizotypal, I don't even know. So um, they put, tried oh to put goodness. me on lithium, which I didn't want to go on lithium um, because my, my mom was on lithium most of my life. Um, 
both of my parents killed themselves. And so I had that as sort of a stopgap. Um, and I just decided to uh, just get really serious about owning my own health, including my mental health, of course. Good. And I, Great. I started doing a lot of, I started doing a lot of, I did a lot of research and I found that I had a, you know, I had had a head injury. I fell off the back of a truck. And um, wow. as I addressed that, um, as I, as I was addressing that, um, I was finding, you know, sim- simplifying my life. I've gotten rid of like 75% of everything I owned. And, and um, mm. the, bo- the bottom line is just that um, my mind cleared up significantly within six months, within a year, I felt like, like amazing, to be honest. And then um, now I, I'm, I just turned 50. I feel 30 most Good for days. You. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I haven't been back to a doctor since. Um, and I, it's just interesting because Good. before, before I Good. decided, to, before I decided to do this, I heard you talking to the lady with PCO, PCO, PCOS or anyway, I had that, I had, I've had like been diagnosed with everything under the sun, you know, lupus, I mean, everything. So since I stopped, mm-hmm. you know, going to the doctor all the time, um, my stomach's cleared up, my arthritis is cleared up, I, you know, by, I, I never stopped moving. So my body, you know, I stay lubricated. And anyway, my point is just this, that it's so remarkable that, um, I'm having a hard time keeping it to myself and yet I'm not like a social media person. I'm not, I'm not really the type of person usually who really talks about myself. So let's, so let's, let me, let me, if, let me give you my sort of take on this. Um, so I'm guessing yeah. one of the medicines you run was benzodiazepines, right? The whole time. No, I know. I know. I would never take that because yeah, both my parents used that to kill themselves. So no, I never would go on that. I was on Prozac, uh, Wellbutrin, Adderall, um, uh, uh, gabapentin, and then one other one. I can't remember what it was, but I hardly ever took that one. Um, was for well, if, did you did you was. take high dose of gabapentin? Um, I didn't take it all the time. Um, it was it wasn't a really high dose. I think it was like 150 milligrams, if I remember. But it's been a really long okay. time, so I don't remember. Right, so that's not bad. I know. I know. Right. I was on. So, I was on so, 60 milligrams of Adderall. See, that's that's crazy. The, to me, that's crazy yeah. uh, to be on all that. That's a, that's yeah. the, the, you know, the generic name for it is dextroamphetamine. That's a high dose. Uh-huh. My, here's my bet. My bet is post, you know, post head injuries, something, and that's a very protean phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Traumatic childhood, mm-hmm. uh, for sure, right. some personality right. stuff, uh, probably the result of both of those things, right? I mean, let's, let's say you actually had a borderline personality uh, manifestations back then that tends to improve with time. So now you're 50 and though that all settles mm-hmm. down. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've had any trauma treatment that would help. Uh, but you know, and maybe your Stop moods were Stop off from the head injury. Yeah. Maybe your moods were off from the head injury, yeah. but the, what's that? No, no, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, you know, it's, what I think is that I think that it was primarily, it was just maladaption to my childhood. I, you know, I, I grew up in one of those families where yeah. there, we had yeah. no boundaries. We had no identity. And I, I sort of, I sort yeah. of stumbled into adulthood, slept what I was sleepwalking through. Um, my dad killed himself and I was 24. I got married and I shouldn't have, yeah. and I had a kid. And then I was like, Oh my God, what did I do? I was miserable. So of course I had another kid and then my mom killed herself. Well, right. I just feel like I spent a lot of my life in shock and, and I kept making choices that I shouldn't have been making. And, and, and I've been yeah. doing, you know, I've been actually, I've been really committed to living those, the best way that I could. I raised all my sister's kids. Right. And my two but, kids but, were but, but here's the deal. Here, here's the good, bottom but, line. But, hmm? Here's yeah. the bottom line. Yes. Is mm-hmm. medications are not a, a, an answer for much. <laughs> medicines should be used. Mm-hmm. Medicines are all dangerous. They should be used in a circumspect way. Mm-hmm. They should not be looked at as the mm-hmm. answer. There are certain situations where they are very important and certain situations where they can be helpful or make recovery possible. But most, for if you really want to flourish, you have to do a shit ton of work on yourself right. and your relationships yes. and your doing. relationship. It's fantastic. With, yeah. Right. And, and I'm, guess, mm-hmm. I'm guessing there was some sort of spiritual component to this too. Is that true? A- absolutely. Absolutely. Right. It's yeah, always, for cool. whatever reason, is, and sometimes that spiritual component is just raising your sister's kids, like you said, or whatever it is, or being of service to people. But no, if no, you do all I those things. Total nervous breakdown. That's what that was. <laughs> yeah. Right. You hit a bottom. You hit a yeah. bottom and you took control yeah. of things. You decided mm-hmm. to change. And it, mm-hmm. I have seen, mm-hmm. spectac- it's why I got involved in the treatment of addiction. I saw these unbelievable recoveries. Mm-hmm. These people go from dying to amazing mm-hmm. like you. 
And I know it's possible. Right. And I've seen people with horrible traumas right. and horrible psychiatric problems mm -hmm. not, not, that have a mm -hmm. psychological base to them, right? Obviously, if you have schizophrenia, mm -hmm. different matter. If you have dementia, different matter. If you have mm -hmm. autism, right. these are neurobiological processes straight out that have psychological elements to it, but they're straight out at their mm -hmm. core neurobiological. Most things have a mm -hmm. deep psychological core to them that you can really recover from, but you got to put in the work. And a lot of people either don't know how to do that or aren't willing to do that. It's, it's hard, yeah, that, right? That's it was the question is that, is that the, the, the method that I used was, was very much just, I sort of cobbled it together because of the, like yeah. I said, the stopgap of my parents. Yeah. So like, there was no way I was going to let that happen. And so I was really determined. And so I cobbled together this sort of process of just, working mm -hmm. it. I just was, and this is the thing, it's just really yeah. simple things like organizing things yeah. and untangling Christmas lights, weird things like that, that yeah. helped me to exercise my frustration yeah. and my, and, and so yeah. I, I'm just trying to figure out how, how I can share this because there are other people who might benefit from this. And I just, I don't have a, well, to, you know, go about write or it should, down should because yeah, I, or do I a podcast, something, you know, when people, when people, the happiness research people, when, when they're asked, I've seen them ask this before, what's the one thing that you want people to do to, to contribute to their happiness? And what they will say is just one thing, make your bed. Start with that. Make your bed. Right. So that's what mm -hmm. you're talking about. Take yeah, care. Do things. Take care mm -hmm. of yourself. Mm -hmm. Corolla talks about this yeah. all the time. He, he talks about how he yeah. was in this, you know, loser job and, you know, dead end everything. Mm -hmm. Parents were horrible no money and he just started looking at the winners and figuring out what they were doing and just started doing it and uh you you can well, do I, it jordan, the, jordan peterson saved my life so you know i i you know and getting and getting honest that's the other thing that saved my life you know rigorous you know, honesty honest myself and getting honest with everybody else yeah rigorous so, honesty oh, limit thing. distortions <laughs> being clear you need relationships yeah. so you need other people and you need other people's perspective on you because we can't be perfectly objective about ourselves and well, so, yeah. So, this is the Erica, thing: is when I cleared you. my head up, when I cleared my head up, I, all my relationships cleared up. Even the ones that I thought were a total mess really weren't. So, you know, that mm. that that was amazing. You know, interesting. But, but all those people were still there, still kind of. Well, yeah, they were still kind of looking at me like, "Are you okay?" And I was just like, "That's all good," <laughs> and we're totally fine. I, I don't know how that happens, but it happened, and so. I just, you know what well, I mean? Well, that's I like, good. I'm a very compassionate person, and I want more than anything for other people to feel like this. You know, that's just. Well, I, Erica, from. I want you. I, I've looked at, you know, I've been taking care of these kinds of glorious changes that you're describing, and they're they're inspiring. Um, but when I've looked at people and I've examined, micro-examined what was happening with people with, at those bottoms when they had these moments of change, there always were important mm -hmm. people around them. There were always a relationship, no, a way of seeing. No, I was completely by myself. No, I was completely by myself. I was completely by myself. I think the reason that I, I think the reason why I went through it is because I was by myself. Did you reach did out to? Just, because, no. I, okay. But I'm All telling right. you, my parents killed okay. themselves, and there was no way that was going to happen to me. So I just kept doing it. It was awful. Okay. It was really awful I believe for you. a couple of years. I just kept doing it. No, yeah, I, I have another friend that uh, yeah, I have another. A good friend of mine, uh, a guy named Wes Chapman, he has a website. You can take, check it out. He, um, he started this exact same journey in sounding like about the same condition when he was 10. He was a mess. And wow. he just said, this isn't me. This isn't my life. I've got to do something. I've got to change. Right. But he was in treatment at the time, and there were people there helping, you know, other people. I really mm -mm. I take a good look at where you were then and see if other people weren't part of that recovery process. No, You've got to take input. I, no, from other you know people. who was? And listen, you know mm. who was? Was people on well, you YouTube said, who, who were sharing their stories. That's where okay. that, that's who okay. I connected with. Yeah, that's, All right. that, and that's you said Jordan Peterson that helped me. And Jordan, you know, oh, no, Jordan yeah. is an, an amazing guy. I mean, I, we just interviewed his daughter about a week ago, uh, Michaela. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I, I fully, fully endorse uh, the stuff well, he says. I, I found the, him. He's not the only one. I mean, I know, of course. I, I, I listen. He had, podcast, he had this. To, hold on. He, he had this series out. You might check it out. Yeah, he had a podcast series out called Maps of Meaning way before he became famous. Yeah, I, I found the, I that. Yeah, and I was I like, wow, this is I, really I interesting. I'm always looking for people that read his books. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always looking for people that pull anthropology and psychology together, and he's been kind of looking at that for quite a while. Mm -hmm. All right, I got to go, Erica. Thank you so much yeah, for the call. Amazing. Well done. Yep. All right, yep. well done. All right, uh, I'm going to have to wrap it up at that. Let me at least check in on the restream for you guys. Um, oh, what's Kelly Gallagher doing? Where is she? I don't see her. Mm -hmm. um, mm -mm -mm. 
I'm looking at your guys' comments. I can only see the page that's in front of me. I'm sorry to say. Uh, uh, uh. All right, you guys. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm sort of burned out. Uh, and I need to get some dinner too, which is uh, interesting. Uh, great calls. I, as always, I apologize that I couldn't get to everybody. Your calls were amazing. Uh, Caleb, Caleb, uh, Caleb Nation, who's at a distant site himself, has helped me uh, engineer and manage this show today, and it worked out pretty well. Susan Pinsky, thank you for uh, for doing so. I don't know if Taylor's on the screening calls, uh, but the calls that came through were great. And I, again, my my problem is I couldn't get to everybody, and. Uh, I couldn't also watch um, the restream the whole time. How to lose weight on Seroquel, Stephanie. That's hard. Seroquel stimulates appetite. Get to the lowest possible dose you can be on. I think that'd be the way to do it. Uh, thank you, Joe. Joe's texting. I see that. Uh, somebody else texted too, I think. Let me see if I can. No, can't see it. If uh, Caleb was texting me, I can't see it. So, oh, yes. Here comes Susan Pinsky. Uh, oh, what, Saturday? Cheers. Go ahead. What about... Saturday. We oh, have a, hillsides. Yeah, talk oh, about. Oh gosh, it. I don't know the website. Okay, we have a we have a uh, a charity we've been supporting for over twenty years. It's a therapeutic living environment school for kids that have been traumatized or abandoned, whatever. The foster care. Open. There's an. It's Saturday night at seven o'clock Pacific, eight at six o'clock Pacific. Uh, hillsides.com, I think, is, or hillsides.org, okay. I think, is where you get more information. Again, it was an auction and they're raising money and they really need help. And okay, so, let me, I'm going to put it up on the restream. Uh, Susan's going to post it in just a second. Uh, hey, my. Uh... Okay, I got it. I'm going to put it on the restream. Okay, put it on the restream and then I'm going to sign off as soon as I see it up there. Join us. So do do join us. We'll be here on Saturday. Do, is it like this? We're going to be doing the same kind of thing here on Saturday as we're doing now. Uh, okay, she's saying don't leave. Come back in here. They want it. Oh, here it is. Whoa, here it all is. Eesh. Two p.m. Susan. Um, is is it in the afternoon? Uh, I think Caleb just cut and pasted the whole thing. Hillsides Gala 2021.ggo.bid. Is that right? Well, I put the link. So the silent auction will be open come February here. Come, 27th come, come, come. at 2 o'clock. Come, come. Say they it again. can read it. It's in there. Everybody, can you read? It's. I just posted it. So That's your post, cool. that huge thing? Yes. Oh. So just go to the link and register. I have a different link that's on the screen, Susan. Yeah, and you can. Is that one correct? Okay, so this is the one that so, Drew tweeted earlier. All the items that we have. So Caleb is posting okay. something as well. I don't see it though, Caleb. What did you post oh, it's, it? Under? It's on your. Oh, it's, well, it's on the screen on the output to the stream. It's the hillsides.ejoin.org. Oh, oh, there it is. I can see it on the computer there. Yeah, so it's, it's the hillsides. one that you tweeted. E. Oh boy, ejoinme.org. I don't think that's right. It's the one you tweeted. So if people want to find Susan, it, I don't think, I don't think Susan tweeted it properly. Susan, you may want to find oh. the tweet and uh, e join me. Is that we're supposed to be on? Okay, wait, I have another link. Okay, here comes another one. Sorry, guys. Yes. It looks like that's the correct page when I go to that link. Yeah, oh, okay. So you went up to it. Okay, hillsides.ejoinme.org slash raising hope twenty twenty one. Right. They both work. Just click on the link. Okay. Click on the link. And uh, we're going to try to come back again in tomorrow, maybe a little earlier than this. No, I lost it. Uh-oh. What's the matter? It is. Anthony Brown, I cannot hand handle too much more. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'm, I'm about to eat and go to bed. Um, and I, I'm going to get my strength back up over the uh, next day or so because I've been on three days of a crazy schedule. Uh, let me go one more time to look at the uh, COVID tracking project to see if they've got any updated data for us, which they should. Uh, yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, it's, it's about the same. Everything's about the same. Uh, uh, the uh, hospitalization is still falling, however. Let me just see what California is doing. I'm just curious. Uh, the, the lovely state of California, uh, continuing to fall. Uh, we are down around 5,000, which is the, as low as we got uh, between the two uh, surges and the hospitalizations are way down. Okay, thank you all. And we will uh, see you tomorrow around this time.